What are health and mental health disparities? A disparity is a difference, and healthcare disparities refer to differences in health and healthcare between populations. Specifically, a health or mental health disparity refers to a higher burden of illness, injury, disability, or mortality experienced by one group of people relative to another. More generally, when we talk about disparities, we're referring to differences in health conditions, access to treatment, or treatment outcomes that are closely linked to social or economic disadvantages. Some examples of characteristics that can represent a source of disadvantage in our society and influence health and mental health disparities are race, ethnicity, and age, disabilities, gender, gender identity or sexual orientation, geographic location, income, education, or socioeconomic status, language proficiency, health insurance status, housing instability, and others. These factors are often collectively referred to as social determinants of health. Some researchers, providers, consumers, and advocates have begun to refer to these as social influencers of health instead of social determinants to convey the message that we can do something to change them, whereas the term determinant has a finality to it that makes it harder to think about solutions. There are groups of people who share many of these characteristics and have consistently experienced social and economic obstacles to their health and health care. Hispanics, Latinos, Latinx, whichever term you feel represents you best, are among the groups m most impacted by health and mental health disparities. Hispanics are more likely to be from a lower income bracket, to be uninsured, multiracial, younger, to have less formal education, and to speak a language other than English. If you add other factors that can increase challenges, like presenting with a mental health condition, having children at a younger age or an unplanned pregnancy, growing up in a single parent household, being of undocumented legal status, or being gay, lesbian, or transgender in a very conservative community, these factors will contribute to health disparities increasing significantly. So while all Hispanics face health and mental health disparities, we must be mindful that there are groups of Hispanics that are impacted at even greater rates. What types of mental health disparities do Hispanics and Latinos face? We talk about three basic types of mental health disparities that impact Hispanics. Disparities in rates of psychiatric disorders, disparities in access to high quality evidence-based culturally grounded treatment options, and disparities in treatment outcomes. Adult Hispanics are at about the same or lower risk for most psychiatric disorders compared with non-Hispanic whites, probably due to the protective factors afforded by strong families and close-knit communities. At the same time, there are differences, for example, between U.S.-born Hispanics, which are about two-thirds of the 53 million-plus Hispanics in the U.S., and the one-third who are foreign-born Hispanics. U.S.-born Hispanics report higher rates for most psychiatric disorders than Hispanic immigrants, which we call the healthy immigrant paradox, because immigrants come to the U.S. often leaving behind economic, political, and social upheaval and face tremendous difficulties along the way, and yet they tend to be in better health than their U.S. counterparts. However, as immigrant Hispanics acculturate, many start to lose the protective factors they brought with them and to adopt unhealthy behaviors like smoking, increased alcohol use, and unhealthy eating, and their rates of health and mental health conditions begin to increase. Hispanic children and adolescents are at significant risk for mental health problems, and in many cases at greater risk than non-Hispanic white children. For example, higher rates of Hispanic adolescents compared to their non-Hispanic white and African-American counterparts seriously consider attempting suicide, have made a plan to attempt suicide, have attempted suicide, or have made a suicide attempt that resulted in an injury, poisoning, or overdose serious enough to require medical attention. In a previous Mental Health Bites, Dr. Luis Saya spoke about suicide in Hispanic adolescents. Finally, disparities in access to mental health treatment are more prevalent, 
with only one in 10 Hispanics with a mental disorder actually using mental health services from a general healthcare provider, and even fewer, only one in 20, receiving services from a mental health specialist. This is due to factors like stigma, lack of knowledge about services, and lack of health insurance. This is especially tragic because we know that treatment works and that most people who seek specialty mental health care do get better. Hispanics are less likely to access evidence-based, culturally grounded treatment options due to the limited availability of these services, to lack of health insurance, to stigma and discrimination and other factors. And when they do access these services, it is often later in the course of the condition. This then leads to disparities in outcomes, with Hispanics not deriving as much benefit from treatment as they could have otherwise. What can we do to tackle health and mental health disparities? As mental health providers, we can increase our efforts to train ourselves in culturally grounded interventions and do more to disseminate and market our services directly to Hispanic communities while we increase awareness and decrease stigma. Early identification and treatment are important if we want better treatment outcomes. As researchers, we can continue to work with providers and communities to develop evidence-based, culturally grounded interventions that are feasible, acceptable to Hispanic communities, easy to implement by providers, and cost-effective. For example, cognitive behavioral therapy has been shown to be effective in treating depression and anxiety, two of the most common mental health conditions impacting Hispanics, and CBT can easily be tailored to incorporate cultural and contextual elements. As consumers of services, we need to better inform ourselves, increase our knowledge and awareness of mental health, work to combat stigma and discrimination, and make sure that people who need help get it and get it early. Where can I get more information? There's lots of information available, but we need to make sure that it is from trusted sources. Encourage your clients or patients to start with their family or personal physician and to ask lots of questions. Most Hispanics first experience mental health concerns as somatic complaints and go to their medical providers who can often not find the source of their symptoms. You can also go to trusted sources online, like the National Institute of Mental Health, Mental Health America, the American Psychiatric and American Psychological Associations, and the National Association of Social Workers, in addition to great organizations like this one, the National Hispanic and Latino Mental Health Technology Transfer Center. These organizations all have terrific websites with lots of information and resources, including local referral sources, and many of them have materials and languages other than English, especially Spanish. Remember, mental health conditions are treatable and early identification and treatment are always best. Thank you.